Hey guys, it's Factor here again, and this is the next part of my tutorials that I'm doing to take you through the process of how to create your own toys and designer toys. Uh, the first part, I went through a whole bunch of tools that I use. Um, there was some cool tools. Tools are cool. I don't know. Still getting used to this whole thing. Um, last video, unfortunately, some of the shit that I did was out of the frame, but I'm just kind of getting used to this whole video thing. So yeah, you'll have to bear with me a little bit while I adjust and try to work out the format. Uh, so this next tutorial, I guess I'm calling it, um, I wanted to kind of cover the materials that I use um, when I'm creating my own toys and doing my own shit. You can use whatever the hell you want. If you want to make a toy out of fucking paper clips and like chewing gum, you can make a toy out of that. Probably won't cast very well, but it could be a one-off. Um, I have a friend of mine, Junkie Projects, he makes these awesome sculptures that are just one-offs and he just uses discarded pieces and stuff. Um, everybody has their own kind of like flow to what they want to use and how they want to create something and there is no right or wrong way. This is pretty much the whole ethos with designer toys and creating your own shit. There is no wrong way to do things. Uh, there is only creating and there is only making. You don't have to get too caught up in, oh, I need to use this in order to be really cool for this to work this way. Uh, some things work better than others and some things work shit I'm not very good at certain things and I'm pretty okay at other things. It just really depends. But your materials are all around you. You can buy certain specific things that you want to use and that's some of the things that I'll kind of go through today. So, without further ado. So, the very first thing that I started using when I started making toys was Super Sculpey. Right, so super, there's a there's an old discarded kind of form there. <laughs> I don't know what I was working on there. So super sculpey is really simple. Um, when it's cold, it gets really really hard. Right. So this is a, a polymer clay. This is kind of like polymer clay means like it's a plasticized clay. Um, it's quite like a little brittle. So there's a whole different bunch of grades of this stuff, right? So the stuff that I use is medium. There's a soft and there's a hard, and then there's like the brown kind of like, I don't know, it's just this off kind of brown stuff. It's pretty common. It's mostly what people, oh shit, I should have moved that there. Um, it's pretty common, but for most kind of serious you know, modelers and stuff like that, they'll use Super Sculpey. So, like, when you're using Super Sculpey, you gotta, like, see, it's pretty cold here today at the moment. Like, it's 14 fucking degrees, which some would say is not very cold, but, you know, it just signals that fucking winter's coming in Melbourne. So, it's quite hard, right? Like, so you gotta do a lot of kneading. I actually have um, a pasta machine, like, with a little crank, and I kind of, like, crank it. And I feed this through it like I would pasta. I wouldn't mind making some pasta at some stage, but I probably can't use that. Um, technically, you should not eat this because it's probably not very good for you. <laughs> it's plastic. Um, so I probably can't use my pasta maker again for actually making pasta. Um, Super Scopy is pretty good. Uh, I used it a lot when I first started out. Um, you basically just create your forms, you know, it's nice to have a little armature in it, and then you put it in the oven and you bake it. When you bake it, it gets a bit of fumes, they say don't use it in an oven that you're going to cook food in, and I've heard conflicting reports about this, like, you know, is it poisonous, is it bad? So I just tended to stop using it so often. Um, the other thing that I found about Super Sculpey is that it doesn't really get that smoothness that I love, right? I, I kind of lied in the last video. I said I never do texture, 
But I, I did this piece here, right? This dinosaur kind of thing. You see, there's some, there's some shit where I've had to patch it up and stuff. This is texture. So this was all uh, super sculpty. I probably couldn't have done a piece like this with epoxy sculpt. I would have, but it would have been an absolute waste. Um, sometimes when you just want to put down a form and create a form, you just use some super sculpty and bake it so that you can get a base form to build on top of. Um, this was basically filled full of alfoil and then sculpted and shaped. And the other thing about super sculpty is that when you're baking it, um, if you're not careful a bit, like it can crack and shit, right? So there's bits that you have to fix and do all this kind of stuff. And you can't actually attach anything to Super Sculpey. Has to just be Super Sculpey. Otherwise, that shit will fucking melt, man. Like, you put any plastic and stuff on there. Some people got around this by uh, putting it and boiling it and putting it in boiling water and stuff like that, but... Yeah, I tend to just not do anything. I'll make the Super Sculpey base form and then I'll attach stuff afterwards and use Epoxy Sculpt to do it. You can attach Epoxy Sculpt to this. That's totally fine. So that's uh, that's Super Sculpey. This is probably the best stuff, the medium. Some people get the soft and the hard and mix them together and they say that's even better than the medium, but, you know, it's personal preference. So the next thing, and I kind of covered this in the last video is epoxy sculpt i use this shit religiously um it's smooth it's uh it, you know you can use it with water to smooth it down and stuff like that um i use it for it, it's really good if you're bashing like bashing is basically where you're taking an existing toy and building on top of it or where you're taking um, pieces um, and parts which I'll go through in a minute um, and kind of bonding them together it's a really really good good tool and I use it pretty much religiously now I don't really use Sculpey anymore um, epoxy sculpt is pretty much my 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 whole thing um, I love this shit it's in two parts you take it as I showed you in the last video and you mix it together knead it and do that um, so you can see here, like in the demonstration piece that I did in the last video, um, I kind of took the epoxy sculpt and just bashed onto this pony a bit just to create this like, you know, <clears throat> other thing. And it kind of bonds in like that, right? So the next important material that you're probably going to have to need at some stage is super glue. Right, super glue. Super glue is god, basically for any kind of kit basher or anything like that. Or if you're just making designer toys in general, you gotta always have a bit of super glue around. Always, there is no exception, unless you're just making stuff out of Sculpey and just making stuff out of epoxy sculpt. You're still gonna need it at some stage because something might break or I don't know. It's just one of those general materials that you're going to have to have around. Um, I have two types. One is like just the regular thin kind of uh, super glue, which is great if you just want to stick something off. But more and more these days, I actually use like a super glue gel, right? So this is like a an ethyl cyanocrylate gel, um, and it's quite thick. I'm not going to pull it out, but it's quite thick. So. What I use this for is, yeah, sticking things down, but it also kind of fills gaps, like where you're attaching something and you're sculpting around things. You kind of fill a bit of a gap. It's not the best. It's pretty fucking rough, but it kind of works. Yeah, it, it, it works pretty well to get through those. For gaps and stuff and for small, for small, um, uh, small divots and things like that and I use this a lot for sanding and sanding is going to be one of the next kind of things that I go through is this stuff and this is uh, Mr. Dissolved Putty so basically what this is is it's a liquefied putty All right it's just a liquefied putty. And I use the aforementioned tool of a skewer 
it's kind of used this to to fill in little divots and gaps. Um, going back to the little example piece that I used before, um, and I'll try to show you. So just where I've taken the epoxy sculpt and where the edges are, I find that sometimes when you're sanding the epoxy sculpt down, you get a little a little bump and it takes extra sculpting. So I actually get a little um, <coughs> a, a skewer of sorts and then just kind of dip it in here. Yeah, I'll show you, I've got a skewer here. Kind of just uh, dip it in. Right. And then I'll just put it around the edges. Or if you find any like little narrow grooves and stuff like that, you can take this stuff and it's really great. It's a self leveling thing. Right. So you can just put it on the little gaps. You might find when you're sanding and stuff that you find these little divots and that. Um, this shit is the fucking bomb. I love this stuff, right? Like, it just, yeah, I use it all the time. And I'll cover this a lot more um, when I get into talking about sanding. I'll just put this down here and do that and screw it up because this shit will dry out and you'll waste your fucking money if you let it dry out. Don't let it dry out. So much shit that I use dries out all the time. Um, I covered the next thing, which is isopropyl alcohol, which I cannot get because motherfuckers want to make hand sanitizer to can, like, protect themselves against coronavirus, COVID-19. Let's call it what it is. There are many different types of coronaviruses. Let's call it what it is. <sighs> Sadly, I'm rationing this. Um, isopropyl alcohol, really useful for so many different things. Cleaning your toys, stripping paint off um, a toy. Um, for Super Sculpey, actually, for Super Sculpey, you can use this with a brush, right? And just put it on and you can, you can brush it down and it'll actually smooth out the Super Sculpey. Um, as I said, like Super Sculpey doesn't give me that nice and smooth finish that I always want, but with the alcohol, yeah, it, it, it helps a lot. Um, water, I already covered in the last piece. So the next material that I tend to use a lot of, model parts. Like, I use all kinds of things, like I use discarded plastic bits and pieces model parts are really cool um, they've always got cool shapes you can attach them and stuff like that I actually um, my kind of style I guess and that that I use um, I use a lot of these uh, Gundam parts so a lot of my techniques that I've actually learned for making toys and stuff have come from uh, Gumpa modelers and guys that have been making Gumpa and god damn man some of those guys are fucking dope oh shit it doesn't matter it's, it's a discarded plastic anyways so i use a lot of parts like this that kind of gives me my style that's my my kind of thing i guess um but uh yeah you can get these i think they're called uh kinobukaya you can get them from banzaihobby.com uh really useful stuff um bits and pieces don't copy my style don't copy anybody's style don't do that don't be that guy Kit bash, bash, yeah, make a few like, you know, addendums and shit, make it your own, find your own style. It's one of the most important things that you can do when you're making toys is to actually find your own style. And everybody that is successful will have their own style. You can copy stuff, everybody copy stuff. Copying's fucking great. Just make it your own. So, model parts, model parts are very cool. So, the next thing that I use, and not so often, but sometimes, is styrene. Styrene, this is, a, this is an evergreen styrene. Styrene is like a, it's just a, a plastic that's really nice and easy to, to cut into and stuff. A, a lot of like railway modelers and stuff like that, they'll use this stuff for making panels and shit. So you'll see on this piece here, um, these, uh, the fins and stuff like that, right? So these are styrene. These have been doubled up um, and I've just super glued them together to make them a bit thicker. 
Uh, you can cut them into shape. You just kind of cut and it snaps really easily. I'll just show you that now. And I probably should have opened this first, but I was like, no, show them a piece in the packet. It'll be fine. And you won't waste time on your video fucking opening up plastic and shit, man. Yeah, okay. I will waste time. So, styrene's really easy. Uh, you just take your scalpel and you kind of like just. You just score it, man. And then. <laughs> uh, and then when I try to show an example, it doesn't fucking do it. It doesn't matter. I'm just doing this really roughly just so you have an idea. Right. Snap. Snap. Oh, that's because this. Because there's more than one fucking sheet in here, isn't there? It's not one sheet. There's two or three sheets. Don't do what fact it does. Okay. That's styrene. So styrene's really cool. Um, you can create like little panels and stuff out of it. You can, you know, it's um, it's just really fucking useful. I find it really useful. Now I'm just dropping shit everywhere. Cool. That's styrene. So, everybody that ends up making toys will end up having, like, mixed materials. Um, previously casted parts and previous toys, like this toy here, yeah, didn't cast properly. So, I can, I can rip this apart, I can cut it up, you know, like, uh, I can build other stuff onto it. Maybe I want to swap this with this. And coming into this, uh, like toy parts, right? Like everybody will have toy parts. You know, you just need. I mean, for example, this was, this is a pony. This is a little pony. This is a little motherfucking pony. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. Um, so you know, like toy parts, they just come in fucking handy. Uh, these are some previously cast pieces. These were actually from a Gundam, and uh, if I look behind me, nope, can't show you, because it's not in easy accessible reach, and I should have had it prepared. Preparation. <laughs> I need to learn better preparation for these fucking videos. Alright, so just like you'll have, you'll end up having pieces from toys that you've cast and stuff like that, and they make really good material, there is no such thing as waste, you can reuse anything, as I said, materials, man, you can use anything, okay? So we went through Gundam parts, and now I'll, I'll do a really brief um, overview on this one. Uh, it's not... Uh, I'll probably go into this a bit more um, when I'm talking about sanding and all that kind of stuff, but honestly, the these here, uh, Mr. Hobby products mr hobby surfaces this shit is pretty much my my go-to for doing anything um you'll probably have seen these pieces um in this gray right so this is a surfacer so i'm in the middle of sanding these at the moment and this one here you can see toy parts gundam parts um, this is all sculpted, all these legs here are sculpted out of epoxy sculpt because there were no legs and I had to extend them out so that I could mold it, right? This uses a lot of epoxy sculpt. Okay. So I religiously use Mr. Hobby, um, surfaces and I'll go through a lot of this stuff when I'm going through and doing the sanding tutorials and that, but basically what this does is you can spray it down on your piece and then sand it off and it'll level out and it'll it'll find all the little gaps and all the little tiny holes and shit and it'll level out and it'll fill those so that when you sand it back right and you can see here when you're sanding it back it's filling all these gaps right and making things really really smooth okay so this Mr. Hobby surface that comes in you know, you've got the spray cans, which is really easy to use because honestly, 
It's probably a little better using an airbrush, but it's fucking pain in the ass, and it motherfucking clogs my airbrush all the time, and I have to fucking clean that shit, and I have to clean it, and I have to clean it, and I have to clean it. It gets tiring, so a lot of the time I'll just use these because I just cannot be fucked cleaning out my airbrush all the time. I have to do it anyways, but I don't know. Um, so this is the stuff that you can get for your airbrush. You put a bit of th leveling thinner in it, right? And it comes in different grades. There's a 500, there's a 1000, there's a 1200. So I'll generally start with 500 and go all the way up to 1200 and then sand it down and do all that kind of stuff. And then you've got stuff like uh, Mr. Super Clear for your end products. Shiny, shiny, shiny. This just makes stuff shiny. Um, it's just a really, really good way of finishing off your toys. So guys, um, not as long as the tools video, uh, but those are some of the materials that I end up using all the time. I probably went through that really, really quickly. As I said before, there is no right way, there is no wrong way. Um, you use the materials that you have, um, you can use whatever's on hand. Uh, certain things will work better, especially if you're doing casting and stuff like that, than others. Um, casting plasticine might be quite difficult. <laughs> might be okay. Silicon and plasticine I use all the time. You can use plasticine. It might deform a little. Um, epoxy sculpt's great, uh, people use monster clay, people use um, Sculpey, uh, they use plaster, you can use whatever really you want. The one thing that I have to say about this, and the one rule about making toys, is that there are no fucking rules to making toys. Just make your toy, right? All these materials are really cool, and maybe they'll end up getting into your workflow. Maybe you'll end up using them or finding something that's really good. I'm not an expert on any of this, so don't take anything that I say for gospel. This is just stuff that I've kind of learned over time and want to disseminate to you, which is the whole point of doing these fucking tutorials. So, um, once again, thank you very much for watching this shit. And I hope that some of these materials are of interest to you. And if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments and hit the subscribe button. Because that's what I say now. Still weird on the second video. Um, let me know what you think and if you have any suggestions for me. I'm very new at this and I really want to just kind of get out everything that's in my head out to you so that you can fucking make toys as well and then you can become part of the toy community or if you are already a part of the toy community that maybe you're seeing something that I did that's really fucking cool and you can say hey Factor you should check this shit out and I'll look at that and I'll be like that's fucking cool I'm gonna do that as well because that's what it's about. This is all about community and it's all about sharing everything that we know and making toys fucking great again. Fuck you, Trump. <laughs>